So this is another tutorial about setting up the Raspberry Pi and to do this we've gone to the rather excellent instructions from CamJam Educate and we're just going to go through really one of the very first tutorials of just setting the Raspberry Pi up and here, here it is uh, which we set up in the, in the last tutorial and um, it's all in its case and it's ready to, ready to go and what we've got here is uh, all the cables ready for it. So we've got the, the power socket, which is there. We've got the HDMI for the, for, the cable, for the monitors. So I think any of the monitors in the computer lab will, will have the HDMI cable on them. And we've got a network cable. So in the first instance, we'll use the network cable. And later on, we'll get this working with, with uh, Wi-Fi. And then we've got a standard Microsoft mouse and, and keyboard as well that go into the USB. So let's just wire it up and, and see what happens. So first of all the keyboard and mouse just plug into the standard um, USB sockets here. So there they go, those are in there. Uh, now we could just pop the network cable in. There we go, that's the network cable in. And we'll just pop the display in there. And the last thing to go in is the power socket here, the micro USB. A little bit fiddly, but let's just plug that in. There we go. And as soon as we do that, there we go. I'm hoping that on the screen, for the first time, comes the, the boot sequence for the Raspberry Pi. There we go. So this is the very first time we've run this, and it looks like there's a few options for things we can do. Now, we know that we want to work with Raspbian, which is the recommended operating system. But we can see all the other options that we have here. Um, data partitions, Raspbian Lite, Windows, Internet of Things, Core and so on. But let's select Raspbian, uh, the main operating system. So we just tick that. And uh, we know that we've got lots of space on the micro SD card. And we can just hit install now. So warning, this will install the selected operating system and overwrite everything there. So this is the very first time we've done this, so we'll say yes. Now we just have to wait a few moments while this formats the, uh, the, the card. Now while that's doing that, um, a few comments. Uh, the Raspbian contains lots of uh, software which we can use. We have the programming language Python, and most of the stuff we do with the sensors is going to be using the programming language Python. Python is the modern language for connecting sensors up and use, using on the internet and so on. So that's uh, one of the fantastic uses of Raspberry Pi. And we also have, as it says here, the operating system here, which is based on Debian Linux. And of course, if you're learning to use the Raspberry Pi, then you're also learning to use Linux, which is an operating system uh, that's free and open source, and very popular and widely used. So that's a, that's a fantastic experience, just this, this little Pi that has all of those things on it. Um, the Raspberry Pi is going to give us a graphical user interface to the uh, operating system. And that will be used much of the time that we use the Pi, but we can also set it up in just command line mode as well, just text mode. And ultimately, I think for many of the systems that we're going to install, that's what we'll use it for. So this is clearly 10% through the installation routine, and uh, it's going slowly. So what we'll do is we'll just zip now to the, the full installation and pick up where we left off. Okay, well, uh, it looks like it's nearly there now, 98% done. This has taken quite some time, uh, but we are nearly there at 98%. So what it's doing is formatting the SD card, 99%, and hopefully that's it. There we go. So it's extracting the file system, finishing off. Okay, so it looks like the operating system installation is finished. It says installed successfully, so I just click on OK. And it's hopefully going to reboot now, and when it reboots, it'll come up in Raspbian. So here it is running, and let's see what happens. Welcome to Pixel. 
powered by Raspbian. Okay. Okay, here we go. Here's the operating system coming up. And uh, let's just have a look around the screen. So we've got all our menus along the, the top and a waste basket here. And we've got options over here for Bluetooth and the sound and uh, for ejecting devices and uh, so on. So let's have a look here at the menus. My programming menu has got all my IDEs and so on for Python. In here I've got some games, Office and, 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 uh, and so on. Now over here I've got a terminal. There's my terminal. That's for typing in commands and, and doing programming and so on. So I'm going to be just going through the the CamJam uh, set the CamJam sensor worksheet now. I'm just just getting everything working. So um, I'm obviously running now the version uh, that, that's there, and let's just, let's just see what version of uh, the operating system I have. So at this prompt, I'm just going to type in ls b underscore release minus a and there we are it's telling me that I'm running version 8 of Jesse which is the operating system that's replaced the old one that was called Wheezy so Jesse is the new operating system version 8 is being run now then um, it's telling me there's two versions of Python here there's 2.7 and 3.2 uh, let's let's have a look um, I want to run Jesse because if I run Python scripts in Jesse then I can access the pins on the Raspberry Pi with my sensors without needing to be a super user at the same time. So what I need to do now is just make the machine ready for receiving the software code from the CamJam EduKit and to do that I need to change the operating system configuration files. So with my uh, editor here I just, I'm just going to go and edit uh, a particular file called config.txt that's in the boot folder. I need to do this as the super user, so I type the command sudo, which is running this as, a, as the super user for the computer. And I need to use an editor. I use the editor called nano. And the file I want to edit is in uh, slash boot slash config.txt. And if I just press the tab, it fills that in. So enter that. And there's, this is now running an editor called Nano, and I can use the mouse around that and do my do my editing on, on that. So let's let's go and see what I have to do. Um, I have to go down to the bottom of this file. So let's just scoot down to the bottom. There we are. I'm ready to enter in some stuff. So just hit return once. I'm going to enter dt overlay equals w1 dash g p i o general purpose interface and comma and g p i o pin is four okay and i'm just going to save this file now that's that's okay i'm going to save with control x do i want to save yes i do so i have to type a yes that's the file and i press return and it's saved that file and edited. Now I'm ready to reboot the machine. So I type in sudo reboot. There are all times of doing this one I'm going to <laughs> get rid of the ongoing rolling. Okay, so it's rebooted, and here we come again. Here's the operating system coming back. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just create a Python program and get it to run, just a standard Hello World program. So first of all, I need an editor. I can either use the command line, or better still, I can use a, a tool under the programming menu here. I'm going to choose Python 3 Idle. And uh, that opens up the Python 3.42 shell. And um, what I want to do is have a new file. And um, that allows me to start editing a, a program. And I'm going to type in here 
just a simple command which is just print hello world there we are so there's, there's my script and um, I'll just save that now so if I do save as in my educate census folder I create my file hello world.py if I save that it's saved if I just quickly open the file explorer and just go and check that it has saved there's my folder and there's the file that I've just saved so I close that down so I'm ready to run that now and you'll see the results of running it back on the the shell here so if I go to run run module I could also press F5 there it is saying hello world so that's my first Python program running on the Raspberry Pi so the next thing I need to do is just to get the source code that goes with all these all these sensors and the sensor kit and to do that I need to go and uh, just update the the Pi first and then go and get the code. The code is all on GitHub which is the open source uh, repository for source code that uh, programmers use and the Raspberry Pi is able to connect to GitHub so, but I need to put the software for GitHub onto the Raspberry Pi. So I open up a terminal, here's my terminal, and the very very first thing I need to do is just to make sure the Raspberry Pi is fully up to date, and I have to say this is something that may take some time, but I'll start the process off. I started as a super user, so I type in sudo to make this command as a super user, and I run the command which is apt minus get, and the parameter is to update the Raspberry Pi. In other words, all of the software on the Raspberry Pi now gets updated. Now, the Raspberry Pi is connected to the internet uh, through the network cable I plugged in earlier and it's making a connection to the internet and it's downloading all of the packages that you see here and this process does take some time and as you start to install more and more software on the Raspberry Pi you'll find that the update procedure takes longer and longer. Uh, it seems that with open source software there's always an update every few days for most of the packages so you're never never on top of things. But in this case that's great, I'm, I'm there. So that's my, my machine is fully up to date. So as I noted earlier I now need to get the GitHub software. So again I type in sudo, so I'm running as a super user. apt minus get, I need to install something. So I type in install. And the software I want to install is called git, the git core, so the, the core functionality for, for git. So I just press go and there we are, it's installed. It's already at the newest version. So that's it. And now I need to just pull off the code from the GitHub. So I just go to my folder. I look and see where I am, type the command pwd. So I'm in home pi. And now I just pull off the code, so I type in git clone, I'm pulling software off the github onto my pi and what I'm trying to pull is git colon slash slash github dot com slash cam jam minus edu kit slash edu kit dot git that's the repository and that's receiving and downloading all of the software that's needed and so that's fully finished and that's the end of this tutorial I'll just turn the machine off so I can close the terminal like this and I go up to the menu here and I just select shut down and I can now shut the machine down like that thanks for watching